Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Brian and I'm going to talk to you today about best practices for data prep and in Gen AI development. So um, I joined Databricks about two months ago and this happened as part of the Lilac acquisition. And at Lilac, what we did was we helped users understand what was in their text data sets. Now, we all know that better data leads to better Gen AI quality. Um, however, the, the, the often repeated advice for better data is just look at your data. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of you know, infinite time, right? Just reading pages after pages of text. I mean, I've been there. It's, it's a drag. Nobody wants to do that. And so what Lilac did was that we helped users narrow in on the specific subsets of that data that could be potentially issues so that people could figure out how to improve their data quality more quickly and thereby get to better Gen AI apps. So what I will be talking today about today is some of the most common issues that we saw in the course of helping our users. And um, we uh, hopefully uh, will be able to take away some lessons uh, that you can apply to your own work. So to set the stage, let's talk about RAG. Everyone knows about RAG. It's the most popular thing this year. And uh, the pipeline for a RAG application will typically involve, let's say, three steps. Uh, the first step, uh, extraction, is about transforming the data from wherever it currently lives into a form that can be understood by LLMs. So if your data set is, say, um, a corpus of PDFs, or it might be an internal website, or it's an export from a JIRA instance, whatever it might be, there's going to be an extraction step required at first to get that text out and then turn it into something that LLMs can natively understand. The second step is going to be curation. And curation is about understanding the overlap between what your users are expecting from your app and what is actually in your data set. Those aren't always necessarily um, in complete overlap. And so curation is of that process of making sure you have the right overlap. Uh, the last step is typically some sort of indexing, whether it be vector search or a hybrid search, basically some way for your application to surface the right data um, so that the LLM can make its best judgments. So today, we'll be focusing on the first two stages of that pipeline. Um, so basically the data preparation section. Now let's switch over to a live demo. Um, I will be using um, the Lilac tool, obviously, partly because that's the, what I'm the most familiar with. But the lessons that I'll show you today will be applicable you know, broadly anywhere. Right? It's just that Lilac is a tool that we implemented knowing that these are the best practices. So it, um, that's, that's, where, that's where we'll start. Now, the data set we'll be using is a data set of um, 800 PDFs. Uh, extracted from uh, the US government websites. And so these are going to be a very broad variety of PDFs from you know, all different branches of government. And so um, we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to run this line of code, which, uh, should, uh, which will run a very simple PDF extractor. It'll take all the text in these PDFs and then spit them out into a new column. Now, once that completes, uh, we're seeing a stream of PDF errors. This is pretty common for PDFs in the wild. They come from all, all, all over the place. So once that's done, uh, let's take a look at what is in the data. All right. So this is the Lilac tool. And um, what you see here is exactly what got extracted from the PDF. Now. I can tell you that looking at the data is such a powerful way to understand what exactly just happened. Um, you can see immediately, like, what is this? Um, there are all sorts of, uh, you know, things like this, right? It's very obvious that there was some OCR tool that might, you know, the, the kerning was weird between the characters, and that's why these spaces got injected. Just by skimming through the data, you can very quickly catch these sorts of errors. Um, one, uh, one specific error that I want to narrow in on, um, which is very common, it looks, that, it looks like, for example, this paragraph got split across multiple lines of text. And that's pretty common when, for example, there's a line wrap 
And so then the, the OCR tool might then split the, each of those lines into a separate line. Now, this is going to be a problem downstream. Often there is a chunker involved downstream in the, uh, the vector index uh, stage. And that chunker often uses these paragraph lines to give hints as to where it should chunk your document. And so if you lose this information about how these paragraphs are grouped together, then your chunker is not going to have a good time. So let's, uh, let's try and fix that. Let's uh, make sure that these paragraphs appear together. Now, in this next, in this next cell, um, I, what I did was I dug into the documentation for this PDF extraction tool, and I found that there is an option to extract the text in blocks. Um, a block is what, what it sounds like. It's you know, a rectangle of text that appears in a PDF. What we can do with this block is we can take all the new lines in that block and then you know, replace all the new lines so that you get a single paragraph as opposed to multiple lines spread out. Now let's run the revised version of this pipeline and see what comes out. By the way, I'm using a PyMu PDF here. This is um, it's a pretty you know, basic tool for PDF extraction. It runs really fast, which is basically the reason I picked it here. It's great for interactive demos. Okay, that's about to finish up. Now, um, another powerful tool that you can do is you can look at side-by-side -side diffs. Here, we have on the left hand, the original parse version, and on the right hand, the newer version of the pipeline. And what this side-by-side -side diff allows you to do is very quickly and visually scan for differences between these two pipelines. When, I, when you just look at the code, well, you can maybe guess at what the code will do, but there's nothing more powerful than actually seeing what that code does to the data. Now you can see here, it looks a lot better. Um, the highlighting can, will very quickly show you that these two lines, um, regulation number four, you know, in contested cases, this line got transformed into this. And now it's all one paragraph as we, as we wanted. Now, um, this is um, another, another thing that I'll point out as we flip through some of these uh, documents. It's very easy to see that this tool will handle um, different PDFs differently. So for example, uh, when we combine these two new lines here, there's only one space here, uh, but there are actually double spaces here and there. Well, let's, let's find some other examples. Uh, I don't know, just, just flipping through, right? We're looking at all sorts of things here. We have um, a variety of different, you know, uh, ways that these PDFs got transformed by the different pipelines. Um, one, of, uh, one mistake I see commonly is that people will spend a lot of time iterating on their pipeline with a single document, and then they try to apply that pipeline to multiple documents. Often that'll break as soon as you try and move to other documents. A best practice, definitely look at multiple documents while you're iterating on your pipeline because you will catch these sorts of errors very quickly. Now, while I'm flipping through this, I actually notice a number of issues. So this editor, uh, this, uh, we use a code editor to basically visualize text data, is actually going through the trouble of um, highlighting these unusual characters. Now, this is another um, quirk specific to LLMs. Um, in another day and age, I might have been talking about NLP pipelines and stop words and lemmatization. I don't know. The, does anyone know any of those words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to do that in NLP five, five years ago, let's say. But now it's all LLMs. LLMs have different failure modes. Uh, some of those failure modes include irregular white spacing. It includes like unusual Unicode characters and swaps. Basically, think about you know what is out there on the web because that's often what these LLMs are trained on, versus what's actually coming out of your PDFs, um, especially these OCR artifacts. Uh, things where uncommon characters are being swapped in, like that's not going to perform well with your embeddings or sorry with your LLMs. The vector search is not going to find the right documents the final LLM is going to do something weird. And so we should fix those things. Now we're gonna go through the last iteration here. I'm gonna show you a little snippet of uh, cleanup text. Now this cleanup text, I tailored to this specific set of PDFs. And I was able to do that because this side-by-side -side diff mode, just looking at the data, I can see the specific um, data processing issues that tend to show up in my set of PDFs. 
your set of PDFs might be different. It might have different extraction issues. And so looking at your data is going to be the most reliable way to understand what you need to do in this particular cell. Now let's run this across our data set and then take a look. Uh, let me clean up some of the um, other unnecessary fields so it's a little bit cleaner to see. And um, the clean will compare to the previous iteration. All right, so now uh, in this pipeline I did, I basically fixed up these double white space issues. Uh, if we flip through, we can probably find other places where, oh, hey, I didn't fix that. What are, what are I don't know. I, I could probably fix that right now if I wanted. Let's let's uh, do this. Great, I fixed it. So that, that, that is the iteration workflow that I went through for maybe an hour or so before this talk to write that style of code. And that's how, that's, you know, that's how powerful it can be to sort of have this sort of visualization tool built into your notebook. Now, um, uh, let me switch back to the talk here and uh, let, let's sort of summarize uh, this section. So for the first stage of extraction, um, the big lessons I wanna, want you to take away are, number one, look at your data. Just visually inspecting is often a very easy way to understand structural issues, especially in the extraction um, of documents from whatever data set you're getting in from. Uh, tip number two, don't overfit to one document. Make sure you're looking at a diversity of documents while you're iterating on your pipeline. And the third lesson I want you to take away is that in this day and age, LLMs, some of the very common issues that we see in the data sets that LLMs have trouble with are going to be things like white space, irregular white space, and uh, uncommon characters. You will want to normalize those uh, before you put them into your vector store. Now, let's move on to the second phase, curation. Um, as I mentioned, curation is about the overlap between what's in your data set and what your users want. And this is an answer that only you can really answer. It's a question that only you can answer because you're the one who knows your own data set. You are the one who knows your own users and your product. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, show you different, a few different ways that you can try and answer these questions with the, the help of a tool like Lilac. This, um, so so let's, uh, let's switch back over to the same data set we had. Um, and so tip number one is that you can use structured columns as a powerful way to understand the contents of your data. Now, um, because this was a data set extracted from US government websites, we actually have a log of all the websites, the specific domain names that we got those documents out of. Now, if you look at a histogram of what, where these PDFs came from, you can see that there is a wide variety of sources. So some of this is gonna be federal level government documents, some from the state level, all different states, all different branches of government. And now, um, you know, let, let's contextualize this. Let's say you are building an app to answer federal tax questions. If that's the app you're building, then you wanna get rid of all the state level documents because if your RAG surfaces the wrong type of document, well, then it's going to give the wrong answers, right? So, you know, in that kind of context, you would want to use this structured column to identify and remove state level documents. Another thing that you can do is you can look at clusters. So clustering is a powerful way to create structure within unstructured text. So what we have here is what we did was we took each of these PDF extractions 
created an embedding over that text and then created clusters in that embedding space. We then asked an LLM to give us some titles for each of these clusters. You know, given five representative examples from this cluster, can you think of a short little snippet that would describe what you're seeing? Right? That's literally the prompt. And uh, the LLM goes off, does its thing, gives us these titles, and now we've got this uh, organized view of what is in the data set, what is the composition of this data set, both in terms of sort of fraction of documents and then uh, specific uh, sub subclusters and clusters within this data set. Uh, now, let, let's just pick one of these and kind of dive in. Uh, I don't know, education reports or marine conservation and fisheries data. Let's dive in there. Northeast Fisheries Science Center reference documents. You know, uh, St. Louis Bay, it's a list of bays and locations, national marine science. So like, you know, this cluster, it contains marine conservation fisheries data, right? It's, um, it's a pretty precise cluster. And, you know, depending on what your app is, you might want to retain it. You might want to drop it. You might be surprised that this is in there at all. You might want to go back to your pipeline and say, hey, I should change the data sources from which I'm exporting because I didn't, I didn't actually want this to show up. Maybe it's sensitive data. It should never have shown up, whatever it is, right? Um, it depends on your context to know what to do with this information. But the, the, you know, sort of the takeaway here is if you have these clusters, it allows you to create structure and sort of understand the composition of that data set. And this is, um, this is, you know, I sort of think of it as a histogram over text data. Now, these clusters, um, are a good way to understand that overlap between user needs and what's in your data set. Uh, but this is actually, um, you know, going back here, I think um, what I want to, what I want to say is that when you're building the first version of your app, um, you're sort of guessing at what your users want, right? You have an idea of what product you want to build, what you think your users will want, and you're guessing, and then you try and solve for that intersection. However, once you deploy your app, you actually have a, um, uh, a continuous answer to what, what is it that your users want. There is a stream of usage logs coming out that says, here are the actual questions your users are asking. And maybe what will happen is the actual use case is not exactly what you originally thought it might have been. So um, I think what I want to say here is that curation is a continuous process. There is a version one that you have to do before you release, right? But it is also something you want to do after you release, because as you get more information about how your users are using your product, you will be able to better understand what that intersection looks like between your data set and what your users are asking for. All right. Um, thank you for coming.